I admit that I can be a little bit of a keyboard snob. Now, I don't collect them or anything like that, but I grew up in an era when mechanical keyboards were standard equipment on most PCs and other computers. Uh, I have here an IBM Model M. I typed on one of these for many years. I actually have several of these. This is my main keyboard right now. It's a Corsair K70. It has Cherry MX Blue key switches, tactile key switches, sort of similar to the Model M. And that's pretty much all I feel like I can use is any kind of tactile mechanical keyboard. Now I needed a new keyboard to use my laptop with a monitor, an external monitor, in order to do video editing. It's just difficult to do video editing on a 15 inch screen. So I set out to buy a cheap keyboard that at least felt mechanical. I was very curious initially about these mechanical feel keyboards. There are a lot of keyboards if you go on Amazon, check out some of the cheap keyboards in the mechanical keyboard section. They're advertised as mechanical feel. I knew that meant they weren't really mechanical, but I was curious if they actually felt like real mechanical keyboards as advertised. So I, I ordered one and I'm showing some of that footage to you right now of me opening it and taking it out of the box and trying it out. Of course, it's just a membrane keyboard. These keyboards don't actually, to me, feel anything like mechanical keyboards. They feel like maybe halfway decent rubber dome keyboards, but still rubber dome keyboards. Now, the one that I ordered was probably good enough that I would have kept it, but it was broken. It came to me defective. It happens, but uh, didn't instill a lot of confidence. An entire cluster of keys didn't work. I tried it on two different PCs. So I ended up sending that one back, having decided that mechanical feel keyboards weren't really mechanical feel to begin with. I just decided to find on Amazon the cheapest mechanical keyboard I could get. And that turned out to be this one. This is from a company listed on the box as Chu, uh, obviously a Chinese company. The keyboard itself is labeled as Moto Speed, which sounds to me like some kind of motorcycle accessory company. But no, they apparently make keyboards. And this only cost me about $31, and it is a real mechanical keyboard. It has blue key switches. They are not cherries, but they are blue key switches, and they are tactile and clicky, just like my other keyboards. So let's take a look at it now. Now, just to get this out of the way first, this is a gaming keyboard. And while I have been known to play some games myself, I don't generally care about things like sci-fi fonts, macros, or RGB lighting. But most mechanical keyboards these days are gaming keyboards almost by default. That's just the market. This keyboard doesn't have macros, and I wouldn't expect it to for $30. But it does have real RGB lighting, which I also wouldn't expect for $30. My Corsair K70, which is the couple-year-old version of the K70, cost more than a hundred bucks at the time and all it does is red. So that's a bonus and I must say that it is kind of cool even if it's not something I'd ever pay extra for. The Corsair is brighter so there's that but I never use my K70 backlighting on anything other than minimum anyway. It does get pretty blinding in a darkened room at max brightness. Here I'll just go through some of the modes on the Moto Speed. We've got a basic breathing effect. Then this is a game mode that lights up different keys for different types of games, and you can customize this. Hitting function escape is the reset button. Check out that animation. This mode is called rainbow, and it just cycles through all the various colors. This is pass without trace mode. The button you're pressing lights up. Here's a little better view of that. Next is kind of a wave effect, what the manual calls mix light ripples. This mode is called Rainbow Horse Race, but it's basically what I can only describe as an attract mode, and entirely useless for any situation other than sitting in a store. Next is Colorful Dazzles, with ripples emanating outward from your keystrokes. And quickly, this is Airy Crafts, and finally we have Colorful Time, and RGB Wave. And here I'll just demonstrate all the colors you can select. There's red, yellow, green, a kind of teal, blue, purple, and white. Not all of these show up super accurately on camera. A lot of them look better in real life. The keyboard's got flip-out feet with rubber stoppers so it doesn't slide around, and the angle's pretty shallow to start with, so I do use these, even though I like a pretty flat typing surface. It's also got a completely standard layout. There's nothing here that's going to surprise anybody. Obviously, it does have the, uh, the Windows keys, and it's got a function key down here to control the backlight and other things. But other than that, uh, everything is 
where you would expect it to be and everything is shaped the way you'd expect it to be. Obviously the top row is kind of compressed downward in order to save space, but it's also slightly recessed so it's hard to kind of hit that by mistake. Um, I think it's a pretty good compromise. Now I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this through the camera so I will throw up a short video that I took of myself doing this as well. But the keyboard does support N key rollover. Um, this is not something that I normally need to worry about in, I guess, the games that I play or anything else that I do. The IBM Model, N, Model M does not have N key rollover. It has two key rollover, I believe. But, uh, see, no matter how many buttons I mash on this thing, it recognizes all of them. So if you're concerned about that, pretty cool. Again, nice thing for $31. The uh, mechanical feel keyboard that I bought prior to this did not support N key rollover. So nice thing to have. So the obvious question is, how's the typing feel? Does it hold up to either the K70 or the IBM Model M? Let's face it, not many do. But uh, let's just try it out. I actually think it's great. It uh, it feels basically just like a Cherry MX Blue Switch. Not exact, it's a little bit different in a way that's hard to describe. For one thing, the keycaps are a little shinier and the, the feel of bottoming out, it's not unpleasant, but it's a little harder. The keycaps themselves are also a little wider and a little bit more squared off than what I'm used to. Reminds me of typing on an old, old computer with, uh, I mean, they're tactile switches, but they almost feel linear in a way. Um, it's a familiar experience is what I'm trying to say. And I've actually typed on a computer, an old computer that felt a lot like this, and I can't think of what it is at the moment. But uh, it's pretty pleasant, I have to say. And I like the stabilizers on the larger keys. I actually like them better than the Cherry stabilizers on the K70, which have a tendency to feel a bit mushy. So really not a bad typing experience at all. Now, if I was going to nitpick anything, it might be the font. You know, it's got kind of the weird modern, postmodern, whatever, gamer font on it. And, uh, you know, it's not my favorite thing, but I can overlook that. I don't generally stare at my keyboard while I'm using it. And it's not quite as ugly as some of the fonts that I've seen on other keyboards, but it's just not the traditional font that I might prefer. It's a shame about the font because the keycaps themselves are double shot, another thing you wouldn't really expect in a cheap keyboard. And they're pretty good quality for the most part. The legends themselves aren't quite as precise as some double shot keyboards I've seen though, and my 9 key shows a definite defect in the double shot process. It's hard to actually feel it, but I can see it and it just annoys me. This keyboard should accept standard Cherry MX compatible keycaps if I ever do decide to replace them. Now before I give you my conclusion on this keyboard, I just want to reiterate, this is not any kind of paid promotion or anything. I bought this keyboard myself because I needed a keyboard. And I'm just doing a video on it because I was curious myself if a cheap mechanical feel or mechanical keyboard could really be worth buying. Oftentimes things that are really, really cheap are cheap for a reason and you don't want them. But in this case, I kind of love this keyboard. It's, I could use this as my daily driver keyboard. It's got blue key switches. They're not cherries, but they feel just like cherries. They're supposedly rated to 50 million keystrokes. I can't say they're going to last that long, I don't know, but it's probably going to be many years before they wear out for me. It's compact, it's well built, there's no, I mean, there's basically no flex there. It's got a metal top plate, uh, it's got, it's well thought out, it's got a nice layout, it's got these rubber backed feet, you know, I really, I, I, I can't think of too many complaints about this keyboard and I can think of a lot of good things to say. So, yes, this keyboard, good deal. I can't speak to any others, but I will put a link to this one down in the description if you're interested. 
you can buy a good mechanical keyboard for $30. Hey, so I'm back and it's a couple days later and I just wanted to do a quick little addendum and kind of a post-mortem on this keyboard. First of all, I still love it. It's still a great keyboard. I've used it extensively since filming the first part of this video. But unfortunately, the manufacturer that's selling them on Amazon has raised the price. They did that just a couple days after I filmed the first part of this video. And they're now selling it for $50 rather than the $31 that I got mine for. At that price, I still think it's a pretty decent deal, but it's no longer really what I would consider a cheap keyboard. Now that said, I found this just by browsing through the mechanical keyboard category on Amazon, and there are thousands of choices there. Most of them are mechanical feel, which again, I would probably avoid if I were you. But there are plenty of mechanical keyboards in there as well for between $30 and $40, even some less than that if you're willing to go without the number pad. So the answer is still the same. Yes, you can get a good, cheap mechanical keyboard. If you do still want this one, and again, I do think it's a great keyboard with a lot of features not found in keyboards this inexpensive, I'm still gonna put a link down in the description for it. And even if you go for something else, I'd love it if you use that link to first go to Amazon because I get commission off that. So help me out if you can. But anyway, that's about it for now. I do hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.